Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and today what we're going to cover is how to test queries in the, in the Apollo client using the mocked provider. So we're going to be mocking our GraphQL calls so that when we run our test, it doesn't make a call to the real um, GraphQL API on the server, but it's going to be using our mocked result instead. So just to show you what we're going to be testing, we've got this nice, uh, very, very beautiful page in React showing some results from a Shopify store. This is just their demo sort of store uh, using the Shopify GraphQL API. And in a previous video, I showed how we can work with this and generate types for it for TypeScript. So I would say that this video is for people that have worked a little bit with uh, GraphQL before, and they're a little bit comfortable with the with Apollo and how to use it in React. And now you're looking at how do I test these queries that I'm writing inside of React. So this is what it produces, and let's just take a look at what that's made up of. So in our app, where it all starts, we've got the Apollo provider. Uh, I've got another one here just to give me some access to some hooks calls, like, um, uh, what is it, use query. But really, you have to know that you've got an Apollo provider that wraps the component that actually makes the GraphQL query. And what that does is it provides a context to your query so that it knows sort of what client to use, where the API is located at, and sort of any extra headers that need to get passed along. So I already have an Apollo client declared up here, and it provides some an error link and some cache and where the HTTP endpoint is, and none of that we're going to be covering in this video because we actually don't want to use this at all in our test. So if we looked at the products query uh, component itself, up at the top, we've imported query from uh, React Apollo. And what we're doing, oh, okay, so I'm not even using the use query thing here. I'm just actually using query. That's cool. So what I've got here is I've got the actual query we're going to be performing. And what it does is it asks for some products. And for each of those products, we want its ID and its title along with some images. And for each image, we want the ID and then a URL, and we can pass in some, um, some variables here to tell it we only want the max width to be 150, max height 100, and what type of image I want returned. So this query here, I've already popped open into the Explorer, and we've got the query here and the result here. So it produces an array, I've just asked for one, but an array of products, and then an array of images for each product. And that's what produces this. Here I'm not limiting it to one, but uh, that's the idea. So how do we test this? So we're going to be popping over to this products.test file, and I've already written all the imports because I am not able to memorize all of those for this video, but I'll explain each of them sort of as we touch them all. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing our test. So it uh, renders products, and then we're going to have our async uh, test function here that will perform the actual test. And the first thing we need is to render our products component, and we will be using the React testing library for that. So we're gonna say const um, something we're going to destructure in here equals render. Okay, so what do we want to render? We want to render the products component, but if you come back over to app, you'll see that you can't just render products on its own because products performs a query, so it needs a query provider or an Apollo provider. So instead of using the real Apollo provider for rendering products in our test, we want to use the mocked provider. So we will use the mocked provider. And that comes from React Apollo slash test utils. So you'll want to import that. And now we've got this here. And inside of that, we can render our products like this. So if I run the test so far, it's probably going to be failing or something's going to be going on. We'll see. Maybe it'll pass. Cool. Passes. All right. It passes, but we haven't really done anything yet. So what we can use is we want to get by text 
that's one of the functions we want to use on the result of rendering this using the React testing library. So the first thing we can do is if we look at products, what it does is it has our query. This is just some TypeScript uh, extending the actual query class here, but we're performing a query. We're passing in some variables. So we're passing in what type of content I want for the images, uh, JPEG. And in our results, we're checking if there's an error return, error loading products. If it's loading or there is no data, we're going to return loading products. So that's the first thing we can test for. Does it first render this loading products div? So what we can do is we can copy this text here. And we can say that we expect get by text, so that loading products, to be in the document. There we go. So what it's going to do is it's going to render the products component wrapped in our mock provider, and we will call get by text and just make sure that that is in the document that's returned. So if we run all of these again, it looks good. All right, so let's move on. So after this happens, we expect it to eventually come down once it has its data and it's going to loop through the products. And then for each of these products in our result, we're gonna have a div with an H2 and a P. And then we're gonna have a UL that shows a list of all the images in our response. I'll share this code uh, so feel free to dive in a little more detail in the actual repository. But maybe what we can do is just let's check to see that this H2 is in the document now. So what does it show? It shows the product title. So here's where we're sort of stuck at the first time. Um, what product title is it going to have? And we actually have to provide the data for the mocked provider. So we need to provide the mocks so that instead of making a real call, it can use this fake um, response instead. So what we can do is de declare a variable called mocks, which will be an array. So say you're making multiple calls within your product component. Um, you can declare them all here. And each one has a query. Now what is it? It has a request. And the request has a query. So here I've imported the query that we're, we're actually running. So if we come back over here to the component, you can see that I'm actually exporting it. And I exported it for the purpose of these tests actually. So back in the test, we've imported it and we'll say, here's the query. But you also have to tell it which variables it expects to receive. So if we come here, we can see that it is passing the preferred content type. So we'll pop that in. And its value is coming from image content type .jpg. So this is just um, an enum in uh, TypeScript. So if I come over here by saying image content type .jpg, I'm basically just saying use this JPEG string. So I have this here, image content type and we're passing in JPEG. Okay, so we've told it, when you see this request, respond with this result. So what result do we want? We want sort of, we can hard code whatever we want the GraphQL query to respond with. So remember I was looking over here in the Explorer and I performed one of these. I can actually just pop this whole thing and come back to the test and I can say the result is going to be this. Cool. So we've got the result is an object that has data, which has products. Products has edges. Edges is an array, one for each product, and each product has a node. Each node has an ID and a title. And then we've got the images as well. So what I want to look for is that I want it to be rendering the snare boot. So if I come down here, I can now say expect get by text 
snare boot to be in the document like that. Okay. So it is unable to find snare boot. So there could be a couple reasons for that. The first reason is I think get by text is not asynchronous. Um, if we look, it seems to return an HTML element right away. So there's another one called find by text. And what this returns is a promise that will eventually resolve to an HTML element as long as it's found. So what we could do is we can just say product tag and we want to await find by text snare boot. Okay, now we can copy this product tag and we will expect that it is in the document. See if it fixes the tests. Will it? No, so it's got an error. So let's dig in a little bit deeper and try to find out what this error is. It is a different uh, response than the last time though, so that's progress I would say. So let's just console out the error. Like that and we'll see what it gives us. All right, didn't give me anything. Hmm, Let's, oh, it's cause I was looking at data. I wanted to see the error. Okay, so no mocked responses for the query. So it was not able to actually find this query. So I must have messed something up. So I've got the request. Oh, <laughs> duh. All right, so we've got this mocks and I never used it. That's, that's great. Okay, so I've passed the mocks now to the mock provider and we're making progress now. So I'm getting a bunch of errors, missing field type name, type name, type name, etc. And that's because when it actually gets the response back from the server, so if I come here and pop open the inspect and go to the network tab and we'll just look for the GraphQL ones. You can see that it's including what type of data is each of the different um, nodes in here. So we've got image connection, product, product edge, etc. So I haven't written all of that out inside of my mocked uh, result. You can see here that I don't have type name anywhere. And they actually give you a way to bypass requiring to have type name there. What is it? Add type name and you can say false. Okay, so now if I rerun this, all of the tests are passing. So I'm just gonna go back and clean up this console.log for error and come back to the tests and they're all rendering and it looks good. So I made a whole bunch of errors and that's pretty typical of development, right? Uh, let's recover what we've looked at in this uh, video though. So we've got our products component, which is rendering out, it's a query, it's performing a query to find some products from the GraphQL, the Shopify GraphQL API. And then it's receiving the uh, response in a render prop here, a render function. And we're dealing with whether it's an error or it's loaded or whatnot. And eventually it's returning some HTML. So we wanna test this. So we've come up here in our products.test.tsx file. And we had all of our imports at the top. So we've got React because we're using JSX and whatnot. We've got render from React testing library along with cleanup so that after each test, it will run the cleanup function. The first important one is the mock provider. So if we come down here in our actual test that renders some products, inside of the render function, we have wrapped our products component in the mock provider. And to the mock provider, we've had to tell it, here are the hard-coded mocks. So that's where I forgot to pass them in. And it was giving me weird errors and 
that's what it is. You have to pass in the mocks, and mocks are an array of objects that each have a request. So along with what query are you performing, what variables does that query receive, and what should the result be for that request. So in here, you have to define every single field and uh, object and array and whatnot that you're going to be using inside of your actual uh, component. This component relies on the ID, the title, and etc. And if you sort of mess that up, so if I spell that total, you're going to be getting errors. So here, in this case, it's, it's not that the test fails, it, the component actually just, it fails, it errors out. Because inside of here, um, it, it produced an error. What's here? Total missing field title. So it actually console.log, console.warned the error that we've got. So if you mess up, you may see that. And I would say the one sort of drawback, there's a couple maybe, but one of the drawbacks of this approach is it's very verbose and a little bit of a pain to, to define. And now you can imagine every time you want to come back here and, oh, let's not show the, the ID. Why would I want to show the user the ID? Let's show the description here. Well, now the test, um, I guess it's passing because an object dot description is nothing. But as soon as I come back here and I say description, now it's failing again because it can't find description. So you have to come back to your test and you have to add a description. Here are some boots. And now it's passing again. So every time you modify your query, you got to come back and update every single mocked uh, result that you have defined. Otherwise, you're going to get errors. That's why you typically just want one of these things, one product, one image. Because if you've got 50 of them, A, there's not really too much of a point. But B, you'd have to add that description to every one of them. So our mock provider is wrapped around. We said add type name false because we didn't want to have to declare the underscore underscore type name field for each of these uh, values in the response here. And then we're just sort of testing to make sure that our component works as expected. So right off the bat, so no async at all, we expect it to say loading products because that's what happens when it first sort of typically runs a query. It's making the request and it's saying loading or it's showing a spinner or something. And then the products come in. So we're saying that. But then we want to asynchronously, so async down here, await the snare boot to show up inside of the document, inside of what's being rendered by this component. So I've awaited that. I've got the product tag now, and I can say that I expect it to be in the document. So that is how you use the mocked provider from React Apollo. In the next video, what we're going to be looking at is how we can sort of create our own auto mocked provider. And what this will do is it will allow us to not have to define every request and every result, but instead we can sort of generate uh, responses on the fly. And the way we can do that is because GraphQL is typed. So we can sort of make our own dynamic resolvers that look at the type and produce a value for that type. So we know that title is a string, so we can just pr automatically produce a string. So it's a little bit more work to set up, but I think it provides some benefits in the long run. That's it for this video. I will be sharing the source code um, below in the comments. Um, hope you liked it. Take care. Bye.